What's up, Chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Big Dog here, and boy, do we have a big time review for you today. Because today, we're going to be taking a look at the 2024 Bike of the Year candidate, the E-Cells 5 Star UC here. Now, you guys might be familiar with this bike already, because I've already put out a few videos with it. And that's just because I had to stay one step ahead of my enemies, I mean, the other e-bike channels, and get some content out there before anyone else did. Why I think this is a Bike of the Year candidate is because this has big power, big wheels, big battery big chain ring, the low price of $19.95. And if you use coupon code CHIT100, you can save yourself $100 off your order and get the base model five star like you see here shipped to you for $18.95, no tax, no shipping. That's gonna be really hard to beat. In today's video, we're gonna go all over the specs and features of this bike. Guys, I don't want you to stress or anything. This video is gonna have a lot of information and at the end, there is gonna be a test. I need you to pay attention, okay? But you know what, guys? That's enough small talk. What do you say we go ahead and get right into it? Here we are, guys, up close and personal with the E-Cells 5 Star. Right off the bat, I have to say, this is a really nice looking bike. I chose this gloss black color here, which I'm actually really regretting now because it turns out every other influencer on YouTube also picked the same exact colors. This bike has a variety of color options, has this really nice blue color, which I wish I would have got now. This gloss black has a matte black, red. You can even pick a custom color, but I believe it's a $200 upcharge. 26 by four inch fat tire bike it has these super sturdy, double walled aluminum wheels here. Now these wheels are really strong. I have about 100 miles on this bike now. I've ridden it quite a bit. I've done some jumps. I've done some things that definitely they probably don't want you to do with these bikes. These wheels to me feel very sturdy and it's actually noticeable when you're riding around. Kenda Crusade tires front and rear. In the back here we have the Hintock 1500 watt nominal 2400 watt peak motor. These Hintock motors I believe are the cream of the crop because they have a hybrid nylon steel gear which makes these motors extremely strong. This bike has the 11 by 34 tooth rear cassette. Now this has this really nice double wall chain ring in the front here keeps you from uh, the chain popping off i'm gonna have some more comments about this when we take it out for a ride but some real standouts of this bike's drivetrain to me this crank set is really nice these crank arms just feel really solid so i haven't really heard people talk about that much but to me that's a big upgrade. This bike has the seven speed shimano tourney rear derailleur i'm not a fan of this derailleur at all unfortunately if you hit anything if you take a slight hit or anything happens to this derailleur it comes out of alignment super easy but unfortunately the vast majority of e-bikes with seven speed transmissions all have the same exact derailleur one of the things i pointed out already is this bike does not come with the chainstay protector and in my initial ride this bike is prone to getting chain slap here as you can see there's some slack in the chain and unfortunately it's chipped up to paint on the chainstay here so first thing you do when you get this bike I recommend you immediately buy a chainstay protector. And might I add, my chainstay protector looks vastly superior to that one maximum charge bar. Now guys, I'll put a link to the, in the description so you can buy this one for yourself. Pedals are absolutely fine. If you ask me, there's some nice tread on them. Um, I actually hit myself in the shin here with this pedal. And uh, let me tell you, it's got some good traction. This rear rack on this bike, now this thing is sturdy. This thing is rated at 50 kilograms. We're in America here. We need to speak American, right? So 50 kilograms translates to about 110 pound weight limit. So the majority of these racks on these are 25 kilogram. This is double. So this thing is beefy. This thing's got some juice. You can put a ton of stuff on this rack, guys. I kind of like having the minimal amount of stuff on these bikes. So chances are in the future, after this review is done, this rack's gonna go off. You know, guys, I'm actually not much of a rack guy myself. I like legs. Wait, what are we talking about? This is going to be a very uh, contentious item here, but up for debate. This is a very traditional mountain bike style seat. I happen to like these seats, but I can already tell you I've seen pictures, I've seen videos. Most of you guys want those big cloud nine seats, those ones that have like 12 inches of padding. You know, you basically want to mount your sofa to your bike. So I can already imagine it right now that the vast majority of you guys are probably going to swap this out but for me being the red-blooded tough man that i am i'm going to leave this seat on there because you know what guys i like it and i happen to like the way it looks and you know what honestly it feels like a really nice seat pro max seat stem 
I know that's what you guys all came to know, right? The Pro Max seat stem. I almost forgot to mention here in the rear, these neat little torque washers in here that are designed to keep the rear axle from twisting with massive 147 newton meters of torque this thing produces. Some features on this bike that are not gonna be relevant if you order your Ecells 5 Star now, because this bike currently has 203 millimeter in the front, 180 in the rear, Tektro hydraulic brakes. Well, lucky for you guys, if you order right now, your bike is gonna come with 203 front and rear and four piston Tektro hydraulic brakes, guys. Now that is a massive upgrade if you ask me, and uh, I'm not bitter about it at all. This is a full suspension bike, and this rear suspension linkage is beefy. Now this thing has got some juice. What cease and desist? I can't say beefy or juice in my videos anymore? What do you mean he's got it copyrighted? So this is an extremely solid, well-built rear linkage on this bike. There is no slop at all. I mean, look at that. If you know what I'm talking about right now, then you know. But this is really solid. This, I have not felt any slop in this whatsoever. Now I have the DNM Air Shock option here. They offer an optional upgrade to the Rock Shocks rear shock. And honestly, I wouldn't upgrade because this DNM is actually a really nice shock. I've purchased this and I put the same one on a different bike. I really like this shock. That being said, I did find a flaw in the rear suspension on this bike. And that is, if you notice here, the rear shock is turned around backwards. And that's because when it's in the forward position, the compression knob on this shock will actually hit the battery so it gets about 80% of the suspension travel. Now, I've talked to E-Cells about this. They've already made provisions in the future where they're gonna have additional holes on the linkage here and will allow for extra clearance so the knob will no longer contact the battery. This is not an issue on the 19 inch frame. This is only applies to the 17 inch frame. I don't think it's really that big of an issue because you set up your shock, get everything the way you want it, and then you just rotate it. e has told me that the reason this is is because typically this frame, it was in conjunction with the 48 volt battery which had a smaller battery pack. This big 60 volt, 20 amp hour battery is a significantly bigger case, causing it for a tighter clearance down here. Yeah, onto this battery pack here. So we have the 60 volt, 20 amp hour battery, which works out to be 1200 watt hours. That is a fairly big battery here. It has this USB port, this little weather stripping here so you can charge it. It has keys so you can put this battery on and off the bike. Three amp charger, which means you can charge this battery from empty to full in about six and a half hours. This frame is really solid. This is an aluminum frame. You can see here, there's like additional material on it. I don't know, maybe if I had a better vocabulary I could explain to you more efficiently, but it's hard to just tell you other than this frame just feels really solid. And you, when you're riding this bike, you really notice that, and I'll explain more of that when we're actually outside riding. The quality on this it feels great. I believe they have a lifetime warranty on the frame itself, so you're probably gonna break everything else before this frame becomes an issue. Highly coveted KT 60 volt 40 amp controller capable of putting on a peak of 2400 watts. Now this is a potted controller, which means it is filled with thermal gel. It helps heat transfer, so it heats up on the inside. The thermal gel is in contact with this aluminum case here. There's some cooling fins here. It's exposed to the air on the outside and it helps cool everything down. And that's gonna help with the longevity of the controller. It's not gonna overheat. Look, it's a win-win and it also means it's, it's uh, waterproof. So you can ride this thing outside in the water and it's not gonna hurt the controller. And it's mounted here directly to the frame. This thing, it's just not going anywhere. And that goes for the whole motif of this bike. Everything feels really solid. Suspension feels solid, the rack's solid. The linkage is solid, the mounting on the controller is solid. Everything just feels really solid. The base model bike comes with the RST guide fork. Now, this is a pretty decent fork. It has your basic preload and compression adjustments here. So it doesn't leave you a whole lot of uh, travel to work with. e does offer an upgrade to this fork, which is a 120 millimeter dual crown air fork, which is more adjustable gives you more travel, can be a more plusher ride tuned in, and that is also coupled with a really big headlight. This headlight works okay. I just really don't like the mounting system on these. Cause you see, there's only one bolt that slides through here and you can never really crank this thing down and get it to me feeling very firm. I wish there was a mount for these that utilized two bolts. So that's coupled with these metal fenders here, front and rear. The front one's a short fender, the rear's got a full size fender. I do prefer plastic fenders because they're quieter. The truth be told guys, I prefer no fenders and make sure Dave's not listening, but uh, 
I'm going to be taking the fenders off probably as soon as I'm done with this review. As of now, if you receive your bike in the next shipment or so, it has these quick release axles, but going forward, they are going to be going to a through axle in the front, which is to me a highly superior design. It makes it a little more difficult to take the tire on and off. It's a much uh, beefier, oh, I can't say that anymore. It's a, much, it's a much more robust connection and almost every mountain bike or any other types of bike all have through axle now. So they're not the strongest. And let's face it guys, we have a big heavy bike that's capable of doing 40 miles an hour. We need to go for what's stronger. So going forward, you guys are gonna get some good upgrades. But me, I'm gonna be with rolling with the quick release. The cable management here is a bit sloppy. I'm gonna be rerouting this stuff, but I wanted to show you, this is exactly how I got the bike. So yes, it is a little bit messy up here and the headlight cable is exceptionally long, but I think there's actually a reason for this. And that's because if you ordered your bike in the first initial groups, you got this nice metal basket here. Now check this out. This is a really solid, this feels exceptionally light. So I'm guessing this is aluminum. So my thinking is they left some extra slack on these cables here. So you can put the basket on here. I will be testing out this basket, not today, but so I'm not gonna be addressing this cable management now, but I wanted to show you what the cable management looked like exactly when I got this bike. Now, ESO's actually thought of a lot of stuff when it comes to these bikes, and they ship you a ton of accessories. This bike helmet, trail pack here. It has a little multi-tool, some Allen wrenches, this little dog bone wrench here, which I thought was really neat. I haven't seen one of these before. A patch kit and a little pump and it all comes in this neat little bag here so that's really nice my favorite accessory by far is this bike comes with this cool purse now it's black so it can go with any of your outfits it's going to fit maybe a floral print would be nice with this or your summer outfits or what i guess this bag is for your bike it's not a purse it's actually a really nice bag really good stitching lots of pouches on here Really surprised by the quality of this bag. Uh, I will definitely be keeping this around. It'll come in handy. All right, so up here on the handlebars, we have these nice faux leather grips. This is a half twist throttle. You have your nice color display here in the middle. And these awesome BMX handlebars. And you've got your Textro hydraulic disc brake handles here. So let's go ahead and turn on the display here. To turn on the display, you wanna hold down the power button here in the middle. And you got your really nice color display. This shows you your pedal assist level here. To adjust what level you're in, you just press the up or down arrows here and it'll show you which one you're in. There are five to choose from. Has your battery gauge here in the upper left. Your voltage gauge, which I absolutely love when bikes show you the voltage of the battery. It's the most accurate way to track your battery. The temperature, motor output wattage on the bottom here. Your speedometer in the middle. And if you press the tap the power button, it'll go through your odometer, you see here, I have 103 miles, guys, because I actually ride my... It has the time, I believe it's the total time of riding, so it looks six hours there. As far as color displays on bikes go, to me, this is the pinnacle because it gives you the information you need without giving you an excess of information that you don't need. And to turn on and off the headlight, simply hold the up arrow and it will turn on the headlight. And everybody's favorite over here, the Shimano 7-speed shifter. My biggest complaint with this is, it's ugly. If you want to get into the advanced settings of your computer here, as soon as you turn on the display, you want to hold on, hold the up and down arrows, and that will bring you into your advanced settings here. See here, this is pretty much exactly how I got this back bike from the factory. Everything was maxed out. Feel free to pause it right now and copy my settings if you want, but this is how I got mine from the factory. All right, guys, there you have it. There's all the specs and features of the ESOS 5 Star. You know, now that we've done the boring part, what do you say we do the fun part and go take this bad boy for a ride? Come on, guys, let's go. Busy day in downtown Antioch, and uh, we are out on the E-Cells 5 Star. And we're going to start off with the obligatory pedal assist settings, guys. I know I've kind of mentioned this one already, but this bike has my favorite pedal assist setup out of any cadence sensor bike I've ridden. And the way it works is each pedal assist level gives a specified level of assist. So. Pedal assist one will give you like two to 300 watts. Pedal assist two will give you 400 to 500 watts. Pedal assist three, 750. Seven, pedal assist four, I think goes up to like 1200. And pedal assist five is this full power. It gives you all the beans. To me, this is a much more natural feeling cadence sensor. By far my favorite. 
I find myself typically riding around in this bike in pedal assist three. It gives a good amount of assistance without feeling like overly aggressive or wanting to lunge forward at times. This bike is just running like tip top shape right now. And I really enjoy that. And one of the things, one of the motifs of this bike is it feels very firm and very solid, very quiet ride, which is uh, pretty much everything I want. That do ever, that being said, this does come at a penalty because this bike is not light. I believe the advertised weight is 81 or 84 pounds. And uh, let me tell you folks, you do feel that. This bike is not light, but there's a purpose to the weight on this bike where I feel some of the cheaper bikes are heavy and it's just because they throw components at it or they're using lower quality products such as steel frames or more metal on the bikes to just weigh the bikes down instead of actually engineering something. But this bike is well engineered. So it has this beefy, thick aluminum frame here that feels extremely solid, which I'm sure it weighs a little more than the competitor's frames. It has this big heavy battery pack, the Hintock motor, combined everything together makes for a heavier bike but it's very firm and solid feeling this is the base model five star and as of right now i understand that they actually have some of these available to order because e-cells released the announced the dual star option which is a dual battery 20 amp hour in the front 15 hour hour in the rear dual crown fork version of this bike and that sells for $24.95. And so what I understand, a lot of people upgraded their five-star orders to the dual star. And now that opened up their initial five-star orders to the general public. You might want to check with ESOs right now because they might have some of these available for purchase without, without the weight. That being said, guys, I wanted to do talk over some of the options you have with these bikes, which I really really like that eSales is doing this and it sets them apart from the competition because you have the option to customize this bike the way you want it from the factory. You can get a custom camo paint job, you can get the dual crown fork, you can upgrade to the RockShox rear shock, you can even go as far as getting a custom paint color, you can get gold wheels, you can do a whole lot of stuff. So if you check out their website, you can fully customize the bike to your liking, which I think is awesome. And they, I believe it's a quote you a 75 day wait on a custom ordered bike and there's even a guarantee. So there's two options with the guarantee. If they go over the 75 day mark, you get $200 back and then you can keep your bike or, or you can opt to get a refund on your order and get $100 back from your purchase price. So it's a win-win, but unfortunately it does come out of the wait. But I really like the fact that they allow you to customize your bike to your liking. So we did the planks of doom on the initial ride, but today we're going to be doing the tracks of tear. And hopefully we're not going to see any criminal activity in progress, which has uh, been known to happen out here. And sometimes I even get chased by dogs, so never know what to expect on the tracks of tear. But I like to demonstrate this area because this really highlights the fact that these fat tires can glide over obstacles like gravel and loose rocks like you see here. Especially when you give it some power, it just floats right over these. So on a smaller tire bikes, you have a tendency to sink into these loose rocks. So fat tires are an awesome choice for an all around bike tire. You're gonna go over all sorts of terrain and not have much of a problem with it at all. This bike to me is just such a great all around bike. The base model is gonna give you quite a bit of range depending on how aggressive you ride. You're gonna have no problem getting 35 miles or so. I got 35 miles on my initial ride, and that was with all sorts of terrain and quite a bit of throttle usage. So if you are more conservative, I think you can get 40 miles on this bike relatively easy. Here's what a six foot two person is gonna look like getting on and off the E-Cells five star. Granted, I don't have the seat all the way up in the most ergonomic position because hey, this is an e-bike. I don't need full leg extension, but I just wanna give you an idea. This is a pretty easy bike to get on and off of. Granted, it's going to be more difficult if you have bags on the rear rack, but I have no problem getting on this bike. And check out the suspension. You can really tell how plush and how much travel the suspension actually gives you. you know, some of these earlier e-bikes were hub-driven e-bikes with full suspension. It was like the full suspension in name, but they came with really cheap components and very limited range. But this bike, let me tell you, actually has a real functional, good quality, full suspension setup. I love the this bike's gonna allow you enough travel to get over the vast majority of terrain you're gonna wanna ride in. 
and uh, might even be able to get you into some terrain you probably shouldn't be riding in. Ask me how I know. So here's what we look like cruising around on the East South Five Star. I don't know if you can really get a sense of the suspension working, but it just soaks up a lot of the bumps you're gonna encounter on most fire roads or bumpy gravel roads such as this. But I think this is a really nice looking bike. Looks like a pretty cool looking dude out here, huh? Look, mom, no hands. This brings up a point with the whole no hands thing. Is this bike is extremely stable feeling. Some bikes, you know, you put on no hands, the handlebars will want to wobble around. Like this bike just doesn't do any of that. So this is kind of a testament to just how sturdy and uh, well balanced this bike feels. You know, you can ride over sand with these flat tires as well. Um, so if you live near a beach, rest assured, you can ride these in sand. Although it uh, adds a degree of difficulty to it, that's for sure. Sand, you can get quite squirrely riding around. But to me, um, these flat tires, at first I thought they were more of a gimmick, but they are actually very useful and great for all around riding. So more about the suspension on this bike. I'm really satisfied with the performance of the DNM rear shock. However, this front shock was what I would say, this front shock is acceptable. It has 75 millimeters of travel, which to me, in the way I ride, I would definitely prefer having a front fork with more travel because I have to configure this in a more stiff orientation to avoid bottoming out. So, which is fine, but if you have more suspension travel, you can set up your front fork to be more plush and it can have more travel, a softer ride, allow you to uh, go over more obstacles without bottoming out. So I can definitely see why that dual star or getting the dual crown fork would be an attractive option for a lot of riders, myself included. Don't let me sway you. I think this front fork is completely acceptable. There are a number of front forks that come on e-bikes that are just terrible. They have no adjustability. They bottom out extremely easy. They're loud. They're, they're just honestly rather have a solid front fork. So this is like the first front fork I've tried on an e-bike, the hub driven e-bike that I was like, wow, this is actually a pretty nice fork. Gives you your basic compression and uh, preload adjustments. The nicer ones will give you rebound adjustment as well. But um, this one is definitely acceptable in my opinion. And this rear shock exceeds expectations. <laughs> I'm gonna check the top speed and throttle only. Well, I'm gonna pedal to get up to speed a little bit first, and then we'll do the throttle only. So we're at 28, 30. Okay, I'm at throttle only now, 31, 32. 33 on the GPS, 34, 35 I saw there, 36, come on, 37 guys, 37, let's do it. Oh, it looks like we're kind of stuck at 36 guys. So it looks like this uh, speedometer looks to be about one mile per hour off, so 36 miles an hour for 250 pounds worth of uh, human being on the bike's pretty acceptable if you ask me. We'll see how fast we can get pedaling it later. So you know, not everyone's gonna be riding off-road all the time. We're gonna go ahead and do some street riding here, which is not my favorite thing. I'm the opposite way, guys. I, I don't like riding on the street on my bicycles. I like riding on the street on the dirt bike, and I like riding off on the trails with my motors, with the bicycle. So we're just cruising right along, guys. I've mentioned this before, but I really kind of prefer cruising around at like 25 miles an hour. And I realize this phone mount's not very good, so we'll be taking that off for now. Pedal assist three, 23 miles an hour. Just cruising right along. And I hope you guys can get the sensation or get the gist of it. This still like is so quiet. Now that I have everything uh, tuned in and you know, I hate to drag companies, but you know, the similar bike to this one I have makes a clunking noise I haven't been able to track down yet and I don't have the fenders on that bike so this bike is definitely a step above when it comes to how quiet and how good the fitment is if you ask me speaking on acceleration uh, I'm actually once I get another bike coming in soon I'm gonna be testing the top speed and acceleration on all these bikes on the same day 
So, you have got to look forward to. So this is another use. This bike's perfect if you want to use it for commuting. As a matter of fact, that's what I've been doing. I've been riding this to the gym the last uh, two weeks now. Not every single day, but the majority of the time. So uh, that's a good 12 mile commute total. And it's been saving me money on gas. And I get some exercise in the morning, so it's a win-win. So don't go into getting a bike like this and thinking you're only gonna use it on the weekends. You can use this bike as much as you want. It's a, you, know, you start to realize that these bikes are actually very practical for a multitude of uses, especially if you have this option out with your uh, bags and a front rack and everything. You can use this for grocery trips. You can do a lot of stuff with these bikes. I personally really like riding it to the gym because uh, it's like a warm up as well. So by the time I get to the gym in the morning, I'm ready to go. And when I leave, it's another like cool down on the way back home. So I really enjoy riding it to the gym. And I have to be honest though, you know, the weather was bad for a while and it was raining and I got out of the habit of riding in every day. And uh, it kind of made me dread riding at first. You get a little bit complacent or you get lazy. But you know, after a week of doing it now, like I'm in in the morning, I'm usually listening to my Bluetooth speaker and I'm like, man, I'm just having a good time. Listening to some tunes, singing along. Just, uh, it's great. I feel it's like definitely a mood enhancer. So by the time, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling good by the time I get to the gym. Bike rides are definitely uh, good for your mental health. We're gonna be getting off the road and now back onto the beautiful bike trails my town has to offer. My town is uh, crime ridden, has a lot of issues, but for whatever reason, there's really nice bike trails out here. So, this is one of the things I like to highlight. This bike handles really well, extremely stable. You know, with all the weight that comes along with this bike comes the stability. So, like I said, the weight on this bike isn't there just because it's available. The weight on this bike actually serves a purpose. I felt like this bike didn't get pedal strikes, but honestly, I found myself getting pedal strikes on this bike uh, when I wasn't expecting it. And I know guys, spare your lecture. My whole point is showing how prone to pedal strikes these bikes can be. And this one I'd have to say is not quite as prone to pedal strikes as the competing 60 volt e-bike, but you can still get them, so be aware. And look guys, can I tell you like just two weeks ago, this was solid green here. And look at it, it's already all dried out and brown. So I don't feel so bad riding out here today because this is now officially snake season and I like to be able to see where I'm going. Man, they were just cruising and just eats all this stuff right up. It's funny, it's like the only part the trail's green is where the actual trail is and it's all brown everywhere else. And this bike just eats up a, lot, a variety of terrain. So don't go into this bike, don't go into buying this bike thinking you're gonna be able to do some hardcore single track trails. Although, spoiler alert guys, I am gonna do some real single track on this bike in the next couple weeks. But um, I wouldn't make a habit of it. And I, And I wanted to point out a little funny thing I figured out with this bike. With this nice rear rack, you can actually just put your weight all the way back on the rear. And uh, it's nice for going down hills or if you want to stop in extreme hurry. Just push your weight all the way, put your butt all the way on the back of the rack and then there you have it guys. So hey, hey, it gives a whole new meaning to hauling ass, huh? Alright guys, so I know the electrocuted Latina, she got 43 miles an hour. Let's see if I can, how fast I can get going. We're at 35, 37, 38, standing up here, 40, 41, Woo. I saw 41.6, I couldn't read the GPS, so we got the 40, but what does people tell you riding the e-bikes not exercise? Alright guys, time for the hill test and uh, spoiler alert, we already know how this is going to end, but we're going to do this throttle only and we're off surprisingly there's like nobody out and about today for some reason coming in hot 26 miles an hour going up the steep part now down to 20 18 17 holding it there 16 Ooh, didn't dip below 16 15 14 and we're coming around the final corner, and yep, as expected, no problem at all making it up that steep hill. And so far in the history of this channel, only two bikes have managed to make it up that hill 
throttle only and they were both 60 volt bike no surprises there but these bikes are extremely powerful guys and you're gonna have no problem climbing most hills but which brings me to talk about this 56 tooth front chain ring now this is going to be a contentious point because i know a lot of people they really i've seen people on the forums they put bigger and bigger chain rings on these bikes me personally i'd like to go the other direction with that uh, this is a 56 tooth while i really like the 11 by 11 by 34th cassette in the rear in my opinion this bike is still geared too steep so if you're right pedaling this thing with no power or if you're going up a really steep hill you can't get your legs in a fast enough cadence to really get yourself any median pull power from your legs which i'll demonstrate here in a second so while these bikes are extremely powerful the gearing still prevents them to, from being the best climbers and granted i might be uh, an exception to the rule because i do climb steep hills my area has a lot of steep hills so uh I completely accept the fact that I might be, I'm speaking for myself here. I personally prefer this bike with a 46 tooth front chain ring because the majority of the time I'm not going 30 miles an hour plus and I can still pedal fine with a 46 tooth at about 30 miles an hour. So to me, I don't need this steeper combo. And here's what I'm trying to say right here. Look, this bike can climb this no problem, but I have to pump it all the way up to pedal assist five and look how slow my legs are going here. I can't get my legs fast enough to get like meaningful power to help assist the bike. So in my humble opinion, guys, this bike, this bike would be better suited for me personally with a 46 tooth front chain ring. So here we are climbing another steep hill and I'm all the way up out of the saddle because if I was sitting down I would not be able to get any power behind it. Whew. I'm gonna have to start calling this the advanced Antioch incline because this is extremely steep. We're king of the mountain up here. Only the most powerful of e-bikes are gonna make it up here. So e-cells is at the top of that food chain for sure. We're gonna catch our breath up here for a minute, enjoy the view, reap the rewards of our effort. And then we're going to continue down the fun part, which is going down this extremely steep hill. Ooh. Oh man. 31, 36, 40. Oh man. That was fun. We're hauling some butt, guys. <laughs> A lot of these bikes will focus on pure speed and power upgrades. But I wanted to take a second here to point out some of the upgrades that are on this existing bike that are, to me, very underrated and I think people might not appreciate it as much because they're too busy focusing on top speed and those, those stats, which is number one, this crank set is awesome. It feels extremely stable. Some of the crank sets that come on these bikes are just downright cheap. This one is just nice, man. This is like solid piece of aluminum here. This thing is just sturdy and I really like the crank set on this. This rear suspension is really sturdy. There's no rattles. It's extremely predictable. I love the rear suspension on this bike. The through axle that's gonna come on these bikes, to me, it would just add a lot of peace of mind because these are designed for much lighter and smaller bikes. So to have this on a bike that weighs 85 pounds, you know, we're talking about 300 plus pounds with me on the bike going 40 miles an hour. These are just really not up to the task, if you ask me. Another upgrade that's something that's very understated is these dull wall rims. These babies just feel so solid. There's no give in them at all. I've had wheels on these bikes where if you hold the brake and you rock the bike back and forward, you can actually feel the rims twisting. So these, these are just really solid wheels. The one downside I've found with these is you can see in there, they have a dual wall. So when you're riding around, you'll come back to your wheels and you'll see stuff stuck in the wheels like this. So cleaning these is gonna be a, more of a pain in the ass, but I will happily take the weight penalty and the difficulty in cleaning for the strength that these rims offer. You can hear on this bumpier part of the trail, you hear a slight noise from the front fender, but overall, this bike is really quiet. 
it's just very well put together and I definitely appreciate that because you know as you ride more of these bikes you realize that some of these things are just racket machines like everything's clunking you know it feels like they're falling apart this bike does not feel like it's falling apart and I know it's very I keep saying it but it's very hard to quantify the way something feels through a video but this bike just feels very solid and uh, nice there's no creaking the only thing I hear occasionally are these fenders this bike is just uh, very solid and it's confidence inspiring when you're on a solid bike what do you girls think of the uh, e-cells five star yeah I know it's one of the nicest ones yet right you know, if you girls want to buy one of these by yourself, you're going to have to use coupon code CHIT100 and you can save yourself $100 off the order. Can you believe that? You can sit on the rear rack and ride no hands. Does this look weird? I definitely don't recommend doing this, guys, but this bike feels pretty stable. I can even lean it. So there you guys have it. That is the E-Cells 5 Star. You know, it's only May right now, but as of right now, this is definitely bike of the year. And for $18.95 after using coupon code CHIT100 for the base model 5 Star, you absolutely can't beat it. Things I really like about this bike, 60 volt, 1200 watt battery, 1500 watt motor, 40 mile an hour top speed, the potted controller, the rear suspension on this bike is really nice. Some things I'm not too fond of with this bike, this bike is big and this bike is heavy and I don't, I'm not a big fan of the 56.2 front chain ring and I definitely don't like the rear derailleur. But all in all guys, this bike has an awful lot going for it. So who's this bike for? This bike's going to be for the e-bike enthusiast who wants speed, power, the ability to go pretty much anywhere. And who's this bike not going to be for? Uh, pretty much people like my mom who need a smaller, lighter bike that's more maneuverable and easier to handle. So mom, just buy the Aventon already. And if you're waiting for me to buy it for you, it's not going to happen because remember, I wanted a pony when I was a kid and I never got one, did I? But anyways, guys, I hope you liked the video. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, hey, maybe I'll respond. Maybe I won't. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and uh, catch you in the next one. Peace.